Hello and welcome and everyone. Welcome. My name is Darshit and I'm excited to be hosting this 39th webinar in our Godre Storage and Handling Knowledge series titled Lithium Ion Battery Technology for Material Handling Equipment. Before I move on to introduce our esteemed speaker, speaker for today, let me just revisit the core purpose of running this knowledge sharing platform that is built specifically for intralogistics domain. I would say it as a Godrej way of giving back the knowledge to the so society that we have gathered in the six decades now to the society and industry. I'm happy to say that the response to our platform has been overwhelmingly positive and it has been a great encouragement for us to continue this initiative and we are at the fourth year of this series now. As a business to strive for greater efficiency, sustainability and productivity, the cho choice of energy sources and technologies is crucial. Lithium ion batteries have emerged as a game changer in this regard, offering incredible potential for powering material handling equipment and all the um, automobiles that we see in the market and in a more environmentally fr friendly and efficient manner. In today's webinar titled Lithium Ion Battery Technology for Material Handling Equipment, with the help of our esteemed speaker, Mr. Chetan Patak, we will delve into the world of lithium ion batteries, their applications, benefits, and the latest advancements in this technology. We will discover how these batteries are transforming the way we handle materials, making operations more agile, cost effective, and environmentally responsible. So whether you are a seasoned professional in the industry or someone looking to stay ahead of the curve, this webinar promises to provide valuable insights and knowledge you won't want to miss. About the speaker, today we have distinguished expert in the field of energy and technology, Mr. Chetan Patak, who will be shedding light on a topic of utmost in importance in our industry today. Mr. Patak brings a wealth of experience and knowledge with over 11 years of expertise in distributed energy source resources, renewable energy generation, and electricity distribution. He is currently the Vice President for Policy Advocacy, Government Relations, and Energy Business at Log9 Materials, a renowned company in the energy sector. Chetan's, Mr. Chetan's impressive track record includes working on cutting-edge cutting edge technology projects related to greening the grid, battery energy storage solutions for grid scale, and application of lithium ion battery technology in material handling and construction equipment, among many others. His insights have been instrumental in shaping the future of clean energy and sustainable practices in our industry. We are privileged to have Mr. Chetan Patrick as our speaker today, and I'm sure you'll find this presentation enlightening and informative. Before I hand over the mic to Mr. Chetan, I would like to talk a bit about Log9 Materials. Log9 Materials uh, is a company that has started uh, its first uh, lithium ion cell manufacturing line. They are in the industry since many years now. The cell line has an, an unusual 50 megawatt. Uh, production capacity. Okay, uh, Mr. Chetan would talk about the following uh, competencies required for the battery value chain that Log9 has got. Its journey, their partnership, the impact that they have done in the environment, the hierarchy, the focus segments, and the founder members. Without further ado, I would ask Mr. Chetan Patak to take over the mic and enlighten us uh, with this knowledge. So before I move on, I would request everyone to put in their questions in the chat box on the top right of your screen. We shall try to answer them straight away or towards the end of the session. And please do not forget to write your name in the box above the Q&A section. That will help us to get back to you after the webinar in case we miss your question. We hope that by the end of this webinar, you will have a better understanding of lithium ion battery technology that is being used in material handling equipment. 
So without further ado, I require I request Mr. Chetan to take over and wish everyone has an insightful session. Over to you, Mr. Chetan. Hi everybody, good afternoon, and I hope uh, as we very recently uh, celebrated World Energy Storage Day, uh, we all in Indian diaspora are geared for this energy transition. Uh, at Log9, wherein we believe in pioneering responsible energy, we envisaged creating a company which is a deep tech, clean tech startup. And with a very uh, broad horizon, uh, which we have been witnessing across the years, we have always found that, you know, most of the lithium ion chemistry which had been worked out had been kept, uh, you know, had been made keeping in mind the European world. Uh, China had been the market leader and America and uh, all these European and uh, US based economy uh, and even the Chinese economy. They have developed these chemistry without uh, thinking much on the. Scenario which we Indians or we who are living in this tropical belt, which is highlighted in this image. Uh, the biggest challenge over here in India had been the experience extreme temperature conditions like even 40 to 50 degrees. Uh, and in uh, colder places like Leh Ladakh, we even experienced minus 20 as well. And we definitely feel that the research and development in India should be done in a way that India is kept first and the temperature withholding capacity of these uh, lithium ion batteries should be according to the Indian conditions, Indian weather conditions. And that's how any company who is into battery, battery energy storage or electric vehicle or automation uh, sector in material handling and construction equipment, uh, they have to definitely take care of this very fact that 25 degree ambient is you know, a very rare case in India. You might find this in a few places in India, but in most of the cases it is in between uh, the usual temperature is in between 30 to 45 degrees in India. So uh, with that thought process, we uh, developed these uh, chemistry which is going into cell manufacturing grounds up. And we uh, started developing this chemistry, keeping in mind the first principles of chemistry is wherein we are trying to develop this in a way that this is most suitable for the Indian conditions and then we can take this technology to the world. So if you see uh, globally, there are uh, lot, lots of development which is going into cell manufacturing space. Uh, but in India, uh, we had been uh, pioneering uh, this cell manufacturing company with our first 50 megawatt hour cell manufacturing line, which is equipped for both LTO lithium titanate oxide and uh, lithium ferrophosphate cell chemistries, which we uh, recently launched uh, five months back. Uh, the commercial line. So this, uh, with this uh, cell manufacturing line, we became the first lithium ion cell manufacturing company uh, at uh, megawatt scale in India. Now, when we move uh, into raw material supplies, uh, this is very important from the standpoint that what is going into these uh, lithium ion cells. Of course, it is like uh, lithium, cobalt, nickel, graphite, aluminium, which goes into this cell manufacturing. We have to definitely take care on three focus areas. How will this technology be developed in India? Uh, what kind of cell chemistry is most suited for the Indian conditions? Then uh, capability of electrode materials and how are we going to indigenize such production? So the battery cell manufacturing uh, will include manufacturing of anode, cathode, electrolyte, separators, current collectors. Basically, these are the building blocks. And finally, the battery pack manufacturing, assembly of cells, indigenized BMS, then balancing of the pack, cell architecture, all of this is 
very important are the very important elements onwards once once these batteries goes into the market then battery as a service mobility as a service players are also encouraged in the indian market apart from you know the capex cell sale uh, which had been witnessed and uh, you might be knowing that even in the, the material handling and the uh, construction equipment space we are into rental mode but this battery as a service model could be quite unique which differentiates or you know separate the energy quantum or energy operations as a separate uh, so you can even go for battery leasing or battery financing these are the innovative models which are been even talked about in the in the uh, indian context these days <laughs> I will not go into much details on log why log nine is different, but then I will give you one basic thing that we are cobalt free and nickel free. Uh, we have chosen cobalt free and nickel free chemistry. Uh, that is, we are more predominantly into LTO and uh, LFP, wherein we are not utilizing cobalt, which is uh, which has lot many, lot many issues. And even in the uh, refining of these cobalt, uh, lots of manpower in those developing nations. Uh, had raised various concerns because all those guys who work in these uh, uh, mining industries, they have a lot of uh, health hazards associated to such mining. Also, what we need to envisage in near future is the giga scale cell manufacturing across regions and what kind of collaborations we can do. Uh, whether you are into cell manufacturing or into the complete battery manufacturing or BMS manufacturing, what we need to establish in India is a complete end to end indigenization of these uh, battery components. Why it is important is in housing of these components will help us reduce reliability uh, on or dependency, I should say on the Chinese or the global market. I, uh, it is it has been uh, prone to many geopolitical concerns which we had been observing over the period. Uh, so that's why there is a, an urgent need to develop indigenous in-house capabilities for various manufacturing across our value chain in material handling and uh, construction equipment space as well. Now, uh, uh, this is uh, we had been into actually this manufacturing uh, sector with major focus on uh, automotives. So initially we started with three wheeler L5 cargo, then two wheeler. We are also coming in uh, Tata Ace uh, retrofit uh, and then four wheelers. We are also planning for the vehicle uh, bus platform as well. But then the focus had been into bringing in right chemistry, not just for uh, primarily for India, but then uh, to this tropical belt, which I mentioned in my initial uh, initial few minutes uh, that we have to definitely look into the tropical belt and develop the chemistries. So, uh, I will not uh, delve more into details, but then we have Pan India presence, Bangalore, Delhi, Chennai being the main head, Hyderabad being the main headquarters. Uh, this uh, I will skip. This slide is a little important. Uh, I would like to also tell you that when we are offering lithium ion battery ecosystem, by that we are, we are as in any player in the lithium ion battery uh, uh, sector, we are not looking forward for uh, uh, something which is not tracked. Uh, which we cannot track. We want, definitely want to track not just the battery performance, but then how the driver or the fleet supervisor get, gets a complete access of how the manpower is functioning. What are the behavioral insights? Is the, uh, if, for example, if there is a new driver onboarded for the forklift or restruck, will there be enough insights on uh, how he is he operating the vehicle? Uh, do they get a central monitoring platform? For example, there are many conglomerate. They want to visualize a central dashboard for all their operations. Can we do that? Also, can we establish a charging infra just like we are doing in automotive space, Pan India, 
कैन वी ऑफर देम फास्ट चार्जिंग और रेपिड फास्ट चार्जिंग बाई रेपिड फास्ट चार्जिंग आई मीन कैन दीज बैटरीज बी चार्ज विद इन लाइक थर्टी टू फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स because we had a very long history of using lead acid batteries which take like 6 to 8 hours for charging at times from 0 to 100% so this had been is, uh, the biggest pain area so which what we have been doing over the years that we have been swapping these batteries for the point wherein we have uh, longer uh, charging time we used to swap these batteries and uh, if there is an operation like 24/7 operation for such vehicle then we need to definitely have n minus 1 resort in the form of these batteries so if one battery is kept on charge another battery is performing so this way we usually rotate and then very important aspect is what is the buyback guarantees uh, on these batteries lithium ion batteries what is the second life second life use case which uh, i will also talk in a uh, uh, few slides so uh, uh, see the best part is in this battery architecture whether it is 48 volt 72 volt 80 volt uh, which is predominantly used or whether it is 24 volt uh, which is used in bopt these uh, batteries uh, can have some correlation which we see in the automotive space but then uh, because of power based application we have to do go an extra mile in defining the controller parameters as well as uh for uh, one is a drive train and another is the power lifting operation which we do so we have to definitely take care of both the uh, worlds uh, uh what we had been doing in the industry uh, industry has been uh, like we have right now got an understanding for like uh, operating in multiple cities we have like right now 4400 batteries being deployed in two wheeler three wheeler four wheeler platforms and also we are coming into material handling space we have uh, so being a deep tech uh, company in india it means that you have to do lot of global patents which you need to file whether it is nano material synthesis energy storage then uh, battery uh, architecture bms level protection system so all of these had been the prime focus for any lithium ion battery company to evolve and then to safeguard themselves from uh, reverse engineering and this had been very critical and uh, we uh, we had been very thankful to ministry of uh, science and technology uh, ministry of power ministry of transportation for helping us in this journey till date uh, now what we are exactly trying to solve do you know uh, that one diesel, uh, one diesel forklift emits emissions equivalent to 20 innovas running simultaneously so if it is like one forklift is equivalent to 20 innovas and that is the kind of impact which we have so as an uh, if we are having our end client as big uh, conglomerate for example any of the tata of reliance adani whosoever vedanta there are many such bigger clients so they all have their esg and climate goals which are now a very pressing need and they need to adhere with these uh, protocols and which are globally signed agreement whether it is kyoto protocol and whether whether it is whether the paris agreement which we we uh, hear very frequently of so they are in, under the ambit that how will they reduce the uh, you know uh, pollution arising out of these uh, diesel genset so there is an urgent need to electrify their fleet that's why we are pushing electric uh, whether it is forklift whether it is bopts whether it is re trucks uh, whether it is stacker all kind of material handling or construction equipments we definitely need to help them reach these milestones and goals so this gives them uh, what we have envisaged is 50 million plus tons of co2 emissions could be saved if we act fast and this is like if we also uh, deploy renewable energy along with it this could be very similar uh, for example if you are uh, charging these uh, with the coal based power uh, plant based energy then it makes no sense because you know still you will be so uh, there should be uh, there could be even renewable energy integration in these warehouses 
so that would be a bigger picture wherein you are charging green energy for their for your material handling equipments also so this angle also needs to be evaluated and then there is like lot of savings and potential that is also there the economics in material handling uh, space if we see to the total cost of ownership we are profitable since the very next year if if we compare it with diesel uh, based forklifts and it is far more economical if you realize the total cost of ownership even if you consider a life of like 7 to 8 uh, 7 to 10 years although it will be definitely more uh, but then uh, even if you consider this much also then you will be all, uh, then also you will be having a very big life i will quickly show you a brief video uh, which uh, tells uh, tells you about the uh, various testings which are required and give you a brief background on uh, you know uh, what kind of cell testing we have done to make sure that the end client is safe so first of all i will uh, definitely uh, try to give you a brief so this is the cutting test which we have done so while cutting test there should not be any fire or explosion so during cutting test there should not be any fire or explosion into the system so and these are uh, tested at our cell uh if you connected on the cell by the way these are lto cells lithium titanate oxide cells and they have the temperature withstanding uh, capability of even 300 degree celsius and more so that is the beauty of lto cells lfp we see uh, uh, okay i will i will tell you uh, we also have uh, test results of lfp and nmc in similar so we always can talk about numbers then but then we have to see the live performance as well so this is the drilling test electricity drilling test uh, electric drilling test so, uh, this should also be fireproof or explosion should not happen while we are drilling these charged cells so this is the second uh, best part about uh, uh, lto chemistry Uh, the last one was the nail penetration test. Now this is the drop test. Uh, See, this one is the most important test which we uh, uh, tend to do. See, I am uh, trying to build a parallel between LTO, LFP, and NMC chemistry because we had been exploring in Indian market mostly. we are exploring lfp and lt uh, lfp lt and nmc chemistry these are the three chemistries which do exist most of it is lfp so this cell a uh, smaller cell which you see this is the lfp cell and this is the lto cell and this gray cell is the nmc cell now most in most of the uh, i'm not uh, trying to uh, downplay any technology but then it is based on the chemistry either uh, based on the chemistry selection we can save these fire and other issues or second is can we build a thermal protection architecture or battery protection architecture around uh, the uh, lithium ion battery pack which we are making so that is the second level of protection which we can build in for example if it is like somebody is making a nmc based uh module then the battery architecture has to be very strong and we have to build in protection uh based on cooling or uh liquid cooling or foam cooling or glue cooling there are various kinds of cooling technology which are there and then the battery architecture the bms level protection should be aligned with the chemistry which we are pursuing also for example nmc chemistry can explode if we reach something beyond or if there is any heating in the system and if we reach somewhere in the range of 75 to 80 degree centigrade these nmc cells are prone to 
uh, blast and same for lfp is somewhere in the range of 100 to 120 degrees uh, it will it will tend to blast but for lto it is 300 degrees so it is like uh, if it is lto it will be far more uh, fail proof and uh, this will be far more safe but then it is also having a cost implication LTO is uh, lit, uh, comparatively costlier than LFP and NMC2. So that's why in Indian conditions, we see most of the players going for LFP. Although LFP gives you protection till like 100 to 120 degree, but then still you have to strengthen the battery architecture and the BMS. Even the pro uh, cooling protection has to be there if you are going for the LFP. So we will also see these. Uh, uh, from here on, we will be seeing more of the LTO and the LFP which we are also iterating at the moment. So uh, what you saw here is the NMC cell is the first one to explode. Uh, this test we conducted in the microwave ovens uh, in a very crude form uh, just to show uh, the end results. So if you see when when it is NMC, it explodes and in LFP it first creates an smoke. And that catches fire. But if it is LTO, it will uh, not catch fire immediate. So this is uh, so. Uh, while I was showcasing this brief presentation, my main uh, target was to demonstrate what is uh, uh, what is best for India. LFP and LTO. These are the most suited chemistries. NMC is uh, you can go for NMC, but uh, you have to building a lot of protection, cooling, as well as uh, uh, various layer of ancillary protection system needs to be built in if you are going for the NMC. Now moving forward. Uh, 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 I would like to show you another uh, video for the battery cell man uh, uh, battery manufacturing. This starts with our journey of cell manufacturing and this gives you a brief in, uh, insight on how the cell is being manufactured and uh, till the battery level. So the complete uh, you know uh, thing which goes into it, it's, it's a video on that. So I'll just play the video. Michael. Uh, Mr. Chetan, Darshit here. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, we cannot uh, uh, hear the audio of the video. It's audio. It's not audible, the video. Okay. Uh, so uh, this, let, this video has a sound, right? Yeah, yeah this video had a sound. Uh, so let me do uh, let me do one thing. I let me narrate what is going behind this. Okay. while stopping or pausing uh, it is like that okay. uh, should yeah, i okay. replay replay this or uh, uh, let this video complete i will then uh, go back and explain to you in bit uh, in detail what is happening here okay sure sure
so hope you guys enjoyed this video i will just explain to you what happened in this video and uh, let me go step by step Are you going to able to hear the audio now? No, sir. Okay. So I will stop and then explain to you. You want to unshare and share once? That will help. Yeah. yeah. This one. This one also, you are not able to get the audio for this video. No, also. no, sir. No. Okay, let me play the video again and then I will explain also. Now you are able to hear. Are you able to hear? Um, no, sir. Okay, I uh, will let me explain then. Yes, yes. So, this is a complete automated line. For cell manufacturing, and the first uh, 50 megawatt uh, cell manufacturing line, which we have built. Here. So, basically, we are here in this facility. We are uh, uh, developing these cells for our three-wheeler platform, uh, and there uh, the production capacity of around 8,000. Uh, vehicles. Um, sorry. This is a complete fully automated line. You see, here we are uh, right from uh, you know uh, this making this jelly roll, and before that coating uh, uh, coating the material. Everything is done fully or in a fully automated. The previous thing we were doing is uh, cell line, which was you no know, uh, semi automatic. Right now, with this facility, we have complete control over cell manufacturing, wherein the entire thing is being automated. Only you need uh, a manpower to collect and uh, put it uh, in different chambers, it's required. For example, right now here there is uh, uh, welding which is going on on the cap. Check for one more video. This uh, that will be far more elaborative.
so here if you see the first first step is so you have to first of all make a slurry mm -hmm. by mixing of battery materials uh, all the solvents binders additive under a controlled environment so it cannot be uh, so it should be uh, you know uh, moisture content should be fed at uh, so there should be no moisture ideally so all these things have to be kept in mind in a controlled environment we have to uh, uh, make the slurry because even a minute deviation can you know spoil the entire process so first slurry making then coating and drying the slurry on uh, the collector coil then uh, uh, we we go for a vacuum drying so these rolls to remove residual moisture uh, we we go for vacuum drying and that calendaring or the coat, uh, coated lecturer uh, to ensure consistent thickness has been done for on uh, these uh, foils Then splitting is required, and then if you see the dew point temperature and the room temperature, that is also very particularly kept at certain uh, temperature. It has to be in a certain temperature range. So winding of cathode anodes and uh, separator along with the uh, tab welding to make a jelly roll. that is the most critical part and then that's why automation is required for a consistency of the cell manufacturing which you are doing or the binding which you are doing so this has to be very proper because finally we have to make sure that all the cells are of similar uh, finally uh, similar age so bucketing could be properly done if the process is uh, manually done there are many chances that this will uh, the cell capacity will differ so that's why automation requirement is huge in this sector so cell feeding and then grooving is also done so that the jelly roll to facilitate crimping of the cell finally the crimping of the cell is proper this is uh, towards the last we do the electrode filling under controlled condition and then there is aging to the okay. aging by carrying the first charge which that cycle like yeah. control temp so basically this this gives you a brief idea about how these cells are made and what we had been doing uh, in this field uh, so the uh, last video was for the initial pilot line and then uh, the fully automatic one was of our uh, 50 megawatt hour line so moving back to our slides and today's presentation uh uh, uh that's it has already told about so we have various uh, departments so there has to be focus on the cell technology and then manufacturing and supply chain and then there are uh, battery manufacturing teams and then uh, integration homologation of the vehicle battery architecture design integration with the vehicle platform whether it is a uh, reach truck pallet truck or uh, whether it is two wheeler three wheeler four wheeler all of these have to be uh, developed by a product uh, development team and then finally there are enablers which we have in our team and we also have a uh, another arm which are, which is into leasing of these batteries uh, through long line mobility so these are our dynamic founders uh, so akshay singhal dr akshay singhal he is from iit roorkee and he in uh, in his inception phase of this company uh, he initially iterated on uh, aluminum air fuel cell super capacitors graphene based products and then towards uh, in last two years we had been completely transformed into lithium battery technology company uh, we are developing our own indian cells 
uh, and then uh, we have made it compatible in a way that even uh, Middle Eastern countries, Dubai, or uh, whether it is Indonesia, Philippines, all these countries. So the market is very big for the tropical countries as well. Karthik Hajela, he is also from IIT Roorkee. Pankaj Sharma, he is from IIT Delhi. Uh, so they are the uh, co-founders, and then we are supported with various uh, advisors who are of great uh, repute in the Indian market. I will just uh, skip to. Uh, the lithium and battery technology for material handling equipment. But before that, I will also like to talk a little bit on. Are we doing really green initiative with this e mobility drive, which we are going forward for? So it's like if we are taking power from the thermal uh, power plants, still we are uh, not uh, creating emissions on that. Uh, on your customer end, but then uh, the energy is still coming from uh, coal based sources, majority of it. So we are also into grid scale energy storages, wherein uh, we are also developing renewable energy plus energy storage projects. So that uh, that's how we are helping the end client, uh, you know, uh, meet their goals in a bigger way. Finally, coming back to what chemistry is most suited for the Indian conditions, it's uh, LTO and LFP, which is I think the most reliable chemistry which we should go forward for. And if it is NMC you are opting for, then you have to put in various different technology layers for battery protection, battery architecture design, BMS has to be put and all of these things have to be of uh, great importance to you because then the temp uh, you have to take care of the temperature with standing capacity of the uh, chemistry which you have which you are choosing. For example, LTO is uh, having a very high voltage cathode and low voltage anode. So this is suitable for long lifespan and rapid charging. For example, I want to charge my battery in half an hour or uh, you know 0 to 100 percent. I'm not even telling 0 to 80 percent. It's 0 to 100 percent within like 30 to 45 minutes that could be achieved. Because here we can charge at a very rapid pace, like 2C, 3C, 4C, even is possible if you are opting for an LTO chemistry. But then, if it is LSP chemistry, you have a low voltage cathode and high voltage anode. In this case, it makes it very cost efficient, but then you have to compromise on the charging capability. It will still charge fast than your conventional lead acid, but then it will be somewhere in the range of like two hours to two and a half hours for a full charge battery. The most important aspect here is the life cycles are com comparatively far more higher. If you talk about LTO chemistry, LTO chemistry can even give you uh, more than 10,000 cycles. LFP can give you somewhere in the, in the range of 2000 to 3000 cycles, but then uh, it is anyway is far better than the 1100 to 1200 cycles which you rely on your lead acid batteries. So as we were seeing in the video, you might have observed that we have gone for a la large format cylindrical cells. Basically, we are going for 60, uh, 160 kind of. It's just like a Coke can. Uh, it's that big. And then for the first time in India, we have introduced tabless technology, which is also used by Tesla. So the biggest game changer which we are trying to build in is how can we reduce the uh, uh, reduce the wastage of the material and then to give you an analogy, you always uh, cook sambar, sambar in a uh, cooker, right? You do not make sambar in a pan. Why? Because to handle the pressure or to cook fast, you use pressure cookers, right? So if you imagine in a way, these cylindrical cells or bigger form factor cells will give you this positive, you know, higher pressure withholding capacity in comparison to uh, prismatic cell. So that's why we as a company took a decision to go for a cylindrical cell uh, 
uh, form factor and then uh, to uh, uh, since developing uh, cobalt uh, elimination uh, we have also worked on cobalt elimination so in our uh, cell chemistry so we have carefully chosen the uh, raw materials and the cell chemistry for which we have uh, developed uh, these cells from so basically as I, as i was telling the peak rapid charging which we can do for an lto cells is as i has six c ratings that is you can charge the complete battery pack nine times faster and the life is also uh, pretty high in this case so 10000 cycles and the temperature withstanding capacity during operation uh, we can easily cater minus 30 to 60 degrees which is the problem statement which we are following for the indian conditions even in rajasthan if you see it goes like up outside temperature is like 45 to 50 inside the uh, cabinet where in uh, these batteries are mounted they will be having little like 4 5 degrees more so i can assume like 55 degree temperature will be there so we should definitely cater to such uh, temperature conditions which will be supporting us and helping us realize first of all the indian temperature condition so this is the most suitable thing which we can do right and with our lsp so this is for mid to long haul range and when we are also uh, bothered about the cost efficient way so we have launched lfp products in the indian market but then with a change that you know we can still do two c charge fast charging and then we are also building immersion cooling then glue cooled cooling also we are trying uh, so there are multiple uh, cooling mechanisms we are trying uh, most of it we have uh, tried to develop with immersion cooling and then the reliable life reliable life to the extent of like 2500 cycles or equivalent to 5 plus years you should get life <laughs> and then still we are not compromising on the temperature with holding capacity we are still giving like minus 20 to 55 degree operating temperature range with the lfp battery pack so that is the uh, uh, brief background about uh, these technology uh, regarding the bms and the thermal management system this is considered to be the brain behind your battery packs uh, so we have to why it is very much essential to have indigenization in the bms is bms and thermal management uh, is very critical you know in a way that every cell has to be monitored and then if if you can build in something like you have embedded telematics in the same device so nothing like that so usually you have many multiple uh, chipboards uh, vcu unit is separate then your telematics is separate then you have a separate bms we are iterated and then we have filed a patent along with this on our own indigenous bms which we have developed which have integrated all these components into one single pcb board so that is the biggest usp which we have but then there are many companies who have now started working on their own bms see you cannot rely on the bms which are imported and then because it reduces your flexibility of operation if i need to tweak uh, the uh, for example as simple as that the temperature with holding capacity or the cut off voltage cut off uh, uh, which i need to set the minimum threshold for current uh, voltage and temperature we need to have complete control on this uh, battery architecture and as well as the bms system so this is the most critical thing which we as a cell manufacturing company and a battery manufacturing company we have worked on so this is in this is not just true for us this is true for any of the uh, you know uh, battery manufacturer to look into these aspects very critically are they first of all doing it themselves or are they partnering with those vendors who have such uh, partnerships with indian uh, ecosystem why it is important is if you see if your dependency increases then it is also somewhere hurting the both the commercial and the technical viability standards 
commercial as in if something goes wrong then you have to rely on even the firmware upgrade to your international counterpart so that is a very sorry state you know if you have to still rely on an international counterpart for firmware upgrades or any troubleshooting so that is very critical and now it's the right time with government support the complete if ecosystem can thrive not just not just battery motors controllers everything could be indigenized even uh, we have been seeing uh, uh, there are various renowned uh, in fact i should i, I should uh, uh, say that curtis zappi all these controllers they had been the market leaders till now and they will be in future but then there should be enough uh, uh, control and uh, we can also look forward for indigenization of these products so that is the thing which which i will definitely look forward for uh, since we are into battery manufacturing i will talk more on the battery part but then uh, this is something which any of the companies uh, working in this space should look forward for is to create an ecosystem around uh, their technology play then uh, cell testing capability see we are an uh, uh, startup right now we are developing very fast but then to have your own indigenous cell testing capabilities is must uh, cell sorting classification of the cell optimizing uh, algorithms for uh, uh, the pack design and sorting and bucketing of the right cells or uh, right voltage band cells for a particular uh, battery pack and based on the application which you are targeting is very important that improves the reliability and the life of your battery so the con this control of cell testing and uh, improve improvising the capabilities uh, of your uh, battery manufacturing line is very important last part is how you are making the battery architecture battery pack architecture so uh, initially you have been seeing everybody all of us witnessed that there were initially uh, uh, lithium ion battery wave fire uh, reported for the two wheeler manufacturing which earned the entire industry a bad name but then now we with cautious support the certifications and the procedure is in place government has taken indian government has taken in fact the every state government has uh, been definitely taking in various uh, control measures to certify to test and promote the right cell right battery chemistry and the complete battery architecture should be certified that is the first and the foremost thing before even we do or talk about anything on the business aspect so these things are been definitely kept in mind while we are also making the battery pack so we also keep these things in mind so these are our marku investors we have done four wheeler deployments then we have done three wheeler deployments we have done uh, stationary also but then this forklift application oh. uh, uh this we are yeah yeah so uh, sorry to interrupt you um i understand uh, um this is an insightful and uh, interesting topic uh, ca can we means you know uh, speed up because we have uh, to yes. take the uh, q and a sections as well i have yeah, i yeah. have, I have one video which will summarize okay, most of okay. things and then uh, there are uh, like hardly four slides wherein i will uh, cut off from there at no, uh, no problem so i will just uh, show you one last video uh, of the forklift wave replication so this is one of the pilot which we have done in partnership with odrage so this is having uh, uh, a us so this is for the 2 ton forklift uh, wherein we have uh, developed for for 48 volt and 72 volt now i will only talk about a very interesting aspect which we have built in is we have avoided the lift lockout at softer fall 80% dod 
we can even take it till 95% and even rely 100% true potential of the lithium ion battery pack now another aspect is the fast charging so the automotive grade charging which you have seen over the period for the electric vehicle we can charge it with the similar bharat charger dc001 which is bif and ara approved and we can charge this vehicle uh, and then this also have a remote telemetric so you can clearly see where the vehicles are being deployed so oh, yeah uh, this is the brief video uh, coming back to our uh, forklift operation and the material handling the average time we all know that it is like in most of the cases it is less than 4 hours and then uh, this occupies like 55% of the market share 20% you can uh, say it is like uh, uh, could be in two shifts and the rest 20% could be uh, uh, three shifts only there is 5% percent which is like uh, 24 7 operation it could be in, in the uh, airline and other departments so what we need to unlock here from here on is with these lithium and battery can we reduce the charging time from 8 to 10 hours to you know uh, as minimum as 2 hours or even 1 hour can we uh, remove this uh, mental blockage or uh, inefficiency uh, which we have been seeing in the ladder switch from 80% DOD to even 95% can we improve on that can we improve the number of years for these batteries from 3 years to 5 years or even 15 years if there is a lithium ion uh, battery which can offer 15 years and then, then nothing like that but at least 5 years 5 to 7 years of warranty life that is required can we move away from ladder fit uh, uh, we can bring in LFP which offer 3000 cycles or we can have LTO which can offer as many as like 10,000 cycles. And then the total cost of ownership will definitely help this product scale up. Can we implement short duration charging during breaks like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, fast rapid charging support? Can we build that with this LFP and LTO chemistry in, uh, uh, during break, for example? Uh, during uh, my tea break of 15 minutes, I do fast charging and then I'm good to go for another, uh, say, 80% uh, I'm uh, charged. And then during my lunch break, can I do a full charge so that my uh, my battery pack is ready for the next shift? So uh, these are the basic uh, things uh, which I would like to. Uh, uh, my life slide is this. Are we able to do asset tracking, fleet management, and remote start to stop if it is a leased model? And client is somewhere else, and you are sitting in your head office. You have rented a fleet. Can I re do remote start and stop of that battery pack sitting in my office if my rents are not coming on time? Can I can I get a predictive monitoring? Can I reach to my customer before any stop in a service happens? Can I do a preventive maintenance or predictive maintenance of that kind? with the dashboard and the analytics which are which we are building. So answer to all of these is these lithium ion batteries which we are all trying and uh, listening uh, forward for for this eager uh, for, from this eager mindset that what is it uh, there for the material handling equipments if we if we have these lithium ion battery packs in our system. So these are basically uh, uh, more focused towards LTO batteries. Uh, uh, this slide is more focused towards LTO. But then uh, the differentiator is like uh, if it is like 45 minutes in LTO, uh, uh, takes 45 minutes to charge in an LTO battery, it will take close to like one hour, 15 minutes to charge an LFP battery. So that is the differentiator. And yeah, uh, uh, this is the brief background which I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, we, I'm, I'm open to uh, listen to uh, uh, questions if there are any so that I can answer them. Uh, so yeah, over to you. Uh, uh, hi, hi, sir. Hi. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for the insightful session, sir. It was uh, very overwhelming that uh, you know how these uh, uh, cells are being made. Means we've uh, as they have come in the mobile, we've been all uh, all these years using this, but never thought that it would be. Uh, so critical and you know if not taken care every every cell that you manufacture would be different 
the rolling process that you showed right. the vac vacuuming and you know the precision uh, for which you use robots okay so there are many questions okay uh, we'll take uh, uh, the most important ones okay um, so here uh, there are several questions about uh, mhc okay so i'll just uh, uh, read two and three of them which are uh, relevant okay right. um, okay the life of batteries for material handling use case okay this is one okay then are there any right. uh, recycling process advisable at the end of life of the battery yes okay yes. so max dod possible i think uh, you've already uh, answered on this okay right. and typical uh, charging time right so i will answer all these three questions very briefly yes let mm -hmm. me first answer the number of life cycles in okay. lithium ferro phosphate which is lfp the number of life cycles which are been given into the indian market right now is somewhere in the range of 2500 to 3000 cycles but then mm -hmm. what we need to ask question to any of the suppliers even to me or anybody is that at what temperature have they declared these number of life cycles if it at mm -hmm. 25 degree if it at 45 degree if what will happen if it is like uh, if i get a temperature of 45 to 50 degree if i if my application is in uh, that temperature condition so what will be the deterioration in the life cycle that we need to understand second point is uh, in lto these life cycles are as high as 10000 cycles but then there is a price to it which is like close to see if it is it is we can say if uh, uh, i'm just giving you uh, an analogy for example if an okay. lfp battery pack for example is been priced at somewhere in the range of 20000 rupees per kilowatt hour it might you might even get uh, a, a supplier who is offering a lesser uh, price uh, but uh, if it is like that L LTO will be priced at somewhere in the range of forty-five thousand rupees per kilowatt hour. So it's like uh, two point two point five x. You can say two uh, just okay. uh, double, just double. But then, uh, if you see the total cost of ownership, I am having a battery pack which will live till fifteen years, which is equivalent to the life of the material handling equipment which I am using. Second is if I am you uh, running a fleet. then it will be of similar kind another aspect here what we see is uh, how much warranty has been offered with these batteries lfp if you are getting a warranty of like 5 or 5 plus 2 7 years then i think it is fine and if it is uh, lto you can even get uh, you know something in the range of 8 uh, to 9 years also uh, that is the kind of uh, chemistry difference all the uh, so I, i will suggest that if it is like a heavy intense operation like three shift or four shift and you are very sure that you will be able to realize the benefit of the batteries uh, which you are using within an year and they, you are you are having extensive usage you should go for lto because your total cost of ownership will be considerably low because uh, if it is lfp then you have to replace at least two twice if you count the number of cycles and if it is lto you will you will end up uh, replacing uh, not even once and then uh, it will be you will be also saving on the timing of the charging uh, your one question was what is the charging time so charging time is like yes. if my battery pack is a for example 10 kilowatt hour battery pack right all right if it is lfp i can charge at max at 2c at max at 2c so which i am offering usually in industry in industry people are offering for 1c only so uh, so uh, 10 kilowatt hour battery pack if you are charging with a 10 kilowatt charger then it will take 1 hour barring uh, barring the uh, efficiency losses right if it is an lto battery pack if i can charge at 3c Three times fast. I I will end up you know charging it within thirty minutes. So that is the difference. I will save. So uh, I will have have to ask a counter question. If I can, uh, can I charge within my uh, lunch or tea break? 
if i if the answer is yes then you pitch lto and if it is lfp if you if you have like one shift of operation then you can easily uh, you know charge after your one shift you can put the vehicle on charge right and it will be ready for if it is even if it is two shift then also lfp is fine but if it is like extensive application three shift four shift then i will suggest you to go for lto because you, you can you can charge it far more in a faster way also another aspect is uh, uh, i answered your life uh, uh, cycle part i have answered your charging part and third is on the cost economics also i have given a brief idea but then these uh, uh, pricings are subjected to uh, what kind of cells there are you know in this uh, so right now uh, since indian pli scheme uh, indian cell manufacturing which are being subsidized and the giga factory which are getting installed are yet not there so uh, indian cells are not there if you are waiting for the pli schemes uh we have started uh, doing it without any government support and pli from the government uh we that's why we have put in a small uh, ideation uh, facility of 50 megawatt hour but then uh, cost economics will definitely uh, narrow down in future and then we are working on that also that's why th this was our first step towards it over the period we will achieve far more economies of scale and uh, we could be more com cost competitive in fact even com competitive than the chinese counterparts or international counterparts see uh, what i will say uh, towards the end is uh, china had been leading the way till now but now it's the right time that indian players even for the cell manufacturing they start thinking and even uh, executing the facilities in india then only we will be able to compete with the international market and we need to support and promote indigenization that is the crux of the matter and the entire thing is uh, that that uh, uh, our thought process should be to how how could we access greater control on the technology which we are building different matter it could be uh, integrating uh, we are integrating it from different indian counterpart which can offer us a bigger control but then that thing that thought process should start coming into the indian ecosystem that we want complete indigenization just like godrej has been a market leader and had been guiding the way for many such startups like us wherein uh, they are supporting and helping uh, startups to even uh, put it into their product line which is a very big thing so uh, that thing we need to support and uh, we need to support the complete ecosystem along with it so yeah uh, that's it over to you Ah, uh, correct, correct, sir. So before I uh, move to next few questions, sir, uh, uh, I would like everyone to fill the feedback form that we have put in the uh, chat box. Okay, and sir, there was uh, there was one more question about the recycling process. Uh, yeah, advisable yeah. at the end of yeah. the life. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, government has uh, uh, mandated EPR, extended producers requirement. That is. So if i am a cell manufacturer i uh, and even in fact the uh, producer or even the user all have their own responsibility of uh, if it is a consumer then they have the responsibility to uh, deposit all these batteries back to the proper recycling agency or if i am a producer or if i am an asset leaser right then also i have those obligations which we need which i need to cater and if i am i am a manufacturer i sorry i have the moral responsibility to even contact all these guys who are uh, in touch with me as a, uh, a dealer distributor network uh, to consolidate these uh, or uh, bring in these batteries and uh, we have to recycle it according to the waste management rules uh we have taken a stand that we will uh, uh offer a buyback uh to uh, our uh, consumers or uh, customers and also what we have done is uh we have ensured a value chain for recycling uh, what we have done is we uh, we can recycle see there are two ways if it is deployed in automotive there is like after after it reaches like 80 to a uh, 70% uh then it is not deemed fit for the automotive grade but then you, you can still repurpose these uh, cells 
एंड सॉर्ट देम एंड यूटिलाइज इट फॉर स्टेशनरी और स्टेशनरी एनर्जी स्टोरेज एंड यूपीएफ वेव एप्लीकेशन एंड रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी इंटीग्रेशन सेकेंड वे टू डू इज वी कैन रिसाइकिल द रॉ मटीरियल कंप्लीटली सो वी हैव टाइड अप विथ फ्यू रिसाइकलर we have partnering with uh, we have uh, mous in place uh, with indian recyclers who are recycling this material so it's basically an urban mining concept which should be having uh, less pollution or negligible pollution while recycling these things or uh, stopping these lithium ion uh, batteries which are very much hazardous to uh, get into the uh, dumping yards so we need to definitely take a def- uh, every uh, whether it is consumer whether it is producer whether it is dealer whether it is the manufacturer all have their own bit to support this cause uh, we definitely uh, are trying to bring in more financial viability to it because why will a uh, guy or a customer give it back to me uh, so there should be a value attached to it so we have uh, salvage value which we have attached to it and we are happy to support customers in the recycling journey as well great great so great understood so uh, this is my last question of the day so uh, yeah. looking at the scarcity of the materials okay right. that are used in lithium ion so how right. uh, sustainable this technology would be and uh, have the industry uh, uh, in search or research of the alternative um, right. Right. sources that would make this technology sustainable for the human being this this is an excellent question uh when we started this journey for lithium ion we very carefully selected the chemistry see uh, do you know uh, in lithium ion battery or lithium ion cell how much is lithium it's only 2% 2 to 3% is lithium but still they are called lithium ion batteries because it will not work if it is there is no lithium right rest of it is what, what is rest of it so you have various different compositions for example in uh, uh lto and lfp battery as the name suggests it is lithium uh, iron phos- uh, uh, lithium iron phosphate so phosphorus is there then we have uh, lto lithium titanate of salt so titanium is there then uh, aluminium is there for the shell part uh, graphite uh, uh, base uh, and or carbon uh, uh, graphite base carbon product is also there for the raw material so all of this we have in india in abundance only part which was missing uh, some time back was lithium now in india we also have lithium reserves which are world's number 2 and number 3 if if i include the rajasthan which was uh, rajasthan mine which have been discovered we are we are going to be number 2 in the world only thing is it's a matter of time that we uh, process our own lithium in the due course so we are in a way secure alternatively you also ask what are the what are the alternatives see there has been lot of uh, research which are going on in various alternative cell chemistries also in the aluminum air fuel cell which we have tried to build in and we ran our first car on the aluminum air fuel cell so metal oxide uh, and uh, fuel cell hydrogen fuel cell these are also very emerging technologies although cost economics wise there is still uh, i i see a uh, longer tenure attached to it you know for them to be commercially deployed but then we have uh, larger deployments which we have seen internationally for hydrogen based uh, material handling and construction equipments as well and there uh, there had been a green hydrogen mission which has been running in india also and then uh, even government is pushing on that uh same i think we uh, we should support with any of the metal so we are all we are we in uh, in log nine we are also iterating on aluminum air fuel cell uh, why because aluminum is abundant in india so those yes, thought processes yes, have yeah. to be there uh, while selecting any chemistry any element which you are deploying how much abundant is it in india we have to think from that uh, standpoint and then decide the technology which you want to opt for well well answered so well answered and uh, uh, with this i once again thank you for taking out your time and uh, uh, you. sharing this uh, uh, worthful knowledge to all of our industry mates and all our participants uh, we uh, from go this storage and knowledge handling series we thank you for taking out time and 
I listen to you. And I hope uh, everyone has filled the feedback form. And with this, uh, we um, take a bit to you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much.